Okay, so for this video, I want to just kind of go over some basics. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna actually learn on this small canvas that I got right here. Now, this was actually already pre-used, so it's got some uh, painting behind it, but once we put a layer of paint, I did gesso it a little bit, so just to cover what was on there before. So this is a great way to save money and to just reuse some canvas, especially if it's a painting that you're like, I don't, I don't care about it too much. I don't need it. So I'm going to put that right there. This is a small eight by 10 canvas. Um, the paint that we're going to be using is acrylic paint. I've got three colors, yellow, blue, and white. We're going to practice doing some mixing. Um, we're also just going to use one brush. The brush that I'm going to be using is a flat brush. Now this is more of a medium size brush. Sometimes it can be a little bit larger too. So you can see it's got some size to it, but um, let's see what we can work with this. So we're going to start off with some basics. We're going to start with making a little bit of a sky and maybe some clouds. So take this flat brush and what I want to do is put some plain blue right on there, plain blue. And I like to set my plate pretty close to me. Now, you'll see me sometimes standing up and bringing the canvas a little bit closer to the cameras. So that way you can see it a little bit better. Um, most of the time I'm up here on an easel when I'm teaching our events, but when I'm painting at home, I typically like to paint flat on a flat surface. So wherever you've got, whatever you like, I leave it entirely up to you. So um, you'll start seeing me sometimes look over here because I have another camera going. Um, that's going to be for my TikToks. This one's here for the YouTube. So it's a pretty interesting setup, uh, kind of going back and forth. But a lot of times I look at the crowd and, um, you know, I'm kind of used to that. So don't worry about that. And I've got my microphone just right up above me right here. Um, and then every once in a while, my arm does get tired. I'll put this thing down um, and, let, and rest it. So let me just go ahead and bring this up close. I'm gonna bring it right about here where both cameras can see. And I'm gonna start on the top. And I'm gonna do this back and forth, side to side motion with my plain blue. Now the acrylic paint that I'm using is a very inexpensive acrylic paint. So it might be a little bit streaky and that's okay. I'm gonna use that to my advantage. Now, some artists do like to paint your edges. I leave that entirely up to you if you want to paint your edges. But I just kind of like just going back and forth right here. And I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. And I do the side to side back and forth motion just because we're going to use that again to our advantage. And you start figuring out the tricks of the trade with all this stuff. So I've got that blue right there. Now I want to taper it down. This is going to be making more of like kind of an ombre effect or like tapering down. You're going to see this lighten up. And what that does is it creates more of an atmosphere. So it's real simple. We're going to take some of that blue. I got a little bit on that flat brush, same brush. And on the side of my white pile, not in the middle, but on the side of it, I'm going to go ahead and mix in some of that blue. It's going to create kind of a nice powdery light blue. I can just bring it right here into my plate, mix it together. Again, everything that I'm using is very cost effective too. So I want you to know that it doesn't take a lot of money to do this. All right, pick this bad boy back up and we're going to go back and forth side to side right underneath that blue line. Now, as you can see, there's not much of a difference. So, what you do is you kind of get used to this paint. It's a great example right here. I'm gonna go ahead now and pick up this a little bit more white on that same brush. I'm not gonna put more light blue on, I'm just gonna pick up some more white. And check this out. There's your powder light blue. So it's all about kind of practicing with this paint, practicing with your brushes. And then what you do is you bring a little bit of that light blue up and it already is starting to dry off my brush, but it blends it. Now, again, we're using a pretty simple acrylic paint. So acrylic paint does dry fast, all right? So keep that in mind, this acrylic paint does dry fast. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up close so you can see what I'm looking at. 
There you go. And as you can see, we've got atmosphere, a little bit darker blue into light blue. Now you could keep going. I'm gonna put a little bit more white on that same brush. And now look at it, it's just really getting really light. That atmosphere down there, it's okay if maybe some of that leftover blue gets on there. You can just go back and forth, side to side motion, and that will help blend these nice, beautiful colors. And what it's also doing now is it's prepping us to get ready for some clouds. It already kind of looks like we've got some kind of cloud action going on there, but that's okay. We're gonna change this so dramatically and it's gonna be very simple for us to do. So we're gonna let that dry off for just a moment. All right, doesn't, again, acrylic paint dries off really, really quick and we figure out ways to use that to our advantage. So right here, you can see, I'm just letting that dry off. And a lot of times I can get like a, a used napkin or a rag or something, and I can just wipe off my brush. I can kind of like crunch those bristles a little bit and take off some of that paint. And you can see it just pretty good. I'm gonna show this camera right here. There you go. I didn't wash it off. It's okay if there's still a little light blue on there, no big deal. Now I'm using the same brush, the same brush. We're gonna do a different technique though right now to make some clouds. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of plain white on my brush. Now that painting is still drying off, but it's okay. We're gonna use that. So let me show you. I'm gonna bring this up close again. And let's just say right about here, I wanna leave some of that atmosphere maybe showing. I'm gonna just go ahead and start blotting or dabbing this brush. Now take a look at that. You can see the different texture start to come right off of that. I'm using a flat brush still, still the exact same brush. But as I come down, I'm leaving maybe a little bit of a gap between the two clouds. You can make them whatever shape you'd like, but I'm leaving a little gap. That way it looks like maybe there's a new forming cloud right there. All right, it gives the illusion that there's a little bit of depth in this painting. And look at that, I'm just blotting very randomly. You know how nature is, it gets all random out there. And I'm just separating it and check this out what little leftover paint I have I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of swipe some down at maybe like a little bit of an angle and it looks like we've got some movement now going on in that sky what a difference right let me bring this up close so you can see and you can do whatever you want see look at this I'm gonna just put a big cloud right up here. I put a little bit more white paint on my brush. And again, I'm holding this canvas. I don't think you need to do that at home. You can just, you know, set it on a flat surface or use an easel, whatever you'd like, whatever is comfortable to you. But I like to show it up close. That's why I hold it. Somebody asked like, why are you holding the canvas? It's only really to show you up close. And I do this a lot of our, at our events just so people can actually see what I'm doing. Some people are pretty far away and they really need to get a little bit of a close up for this. So I'm gonna keep working on this and creating an amazing atmosphere. Again, the paint is drying on its own very quickly and we use it as sparingly as we can. Let's go ahead and add maybe a little bit of thunderstorms here like little thunder clouds just starting to build up in that background. Again, I'm leaving a little gap in between the clouds just to look like there is some distance between there and the next cloud. But you get the idea. We're just gonna keep making some random dashes and dabs and take maybe a little bit of leftover, maybe make some flat clouds down below here. And it just takes getting used to. All you're doing is getting used to the paint. You're getting used to the feel of it from going from your brush onto that canvas. Now, once it's drying off, 
I'm going to take a little bit more white paint on this brush and watch this area right here. I'm going to go ahead and just dab and blot a little bit right here on the top. And that gives it that highlighted effect, like maybe a light source is just shining on that cloud. And look at that. That is what it's all about. Like, it's just a layer. I waited for that first layer to dry off a little bit. And then I add a secondary highlight effect on there. And it really gives that pop of, like, depth and just really, really brightens up that painting. So that's a pretty cool thing. So we're just doing white clouds today. Now, sometimes you can add colors into your clouds. We can do that on a different step, another episode. Um, but I just wanted to get the basics down. We've only used two colors, blue and white, exactly what we want to do for this. Now, what you can do is you can rinse off that brush. Once you're done, dry it off. And I'm going to do the same, except I like to get this video straight through. So I'm just going to go ahead and wipe my brush off. And it's okay. I want you to go ahead and wash yours off. You're at home. You got the time. I'm just going to run this straight through. This is going to be a live action video. I'm going to make it all happen right now. Look at me with my shirt unbuttoned like that. What is my, what is going on here? All right. We'll just leave it like that. <laughs> so now down below, we're going to kind of do the same process right down here below. You can see all that white. We know now where our horizon line is. That's the cool part. We know that's where land is gonna meet our awesome sky. And for this, I wanted to do like a nice green, bright, kind of like very vibrant kind of feel. So we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do some mixing. So I'm gonna take that same brush. Look at that, I got that flat brush still. I'm gonna put some blue on there. And blue mixed with yellow makes you got it, green. And we're gonna go ahead and mix it into the side there just to see what kind of green we're gonna get. That way we still have some yellow to play with, we still have some blue to play with, but it does make a nice green. Now the more blue you add, the darker or more turquoise that green's gonna be. The more yellow you add, it's gonna be a brighter kind of green. So. And everybody's got their own take on this. That's what I love. But this is just your base color. We'll add highlights. We'll change it. So I'm just going to add just this kind of green. Put my plate down. And this is where you can start making your horizon line. I'm just doing this back and forth motion with the flat side of my brush. Now it's okay if this is okay if it's a little bumpy and not perfect. Remember, nature does that. Nature ain't perfect. And what I'm going to do is just continue that back and forth, side to side motion. Now, in the process, you can dab a little bit, you can dash a little bit, but really you just want to do that back and forth, side to side motion. This gives the illusion of maybe some rolling hills or different kind of features happening on this grass. Okay. Now I'm taking this as far as I can go without putting any more paint on my brush and just seeing how different textures start to pop off different things. And it's actually looking pretty good. You can see it up close here. You can see it just looks messy. It looks kind of random and that is okay. I'm going to put that down, put a little bit more of that green on this brush. And if you came in late, don't worry. You can catch up real quick and you can see we're just using one brush to do this entire painting. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more down here. And it's texturizing very nicely. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, hey, can you do this, you know, slower? I say, well, you know, I'll record it for you, so that way you can just watch it, rewind it, things like that. I'm actually going pretty slow for my style right now. A lot of times I, I really go through paintings very quickly. Um, there are artists that spend months, sometimes years painting a painting, um, 
And that is really amazing to me, but I just don't have the patience for that. <laughs> so as you can see, here we go. We've got our green, but there's not just plain green. There's light green. There's a little darker green. There's a little bit of yellows in there. There's a little bit of turquoise in there. And that's the beauty of it. You can see that there are some differences going right in there. That's pretty cool. All right. And that's going to be our theme of what we're going to be doing. We're going to add some depth into this. We're going to change it. We're going to make some cool things happen. We'll start off with low lights. I'm going to take that same brush that has my green on there, and I'm going to bring a little bit more blue into that green, making a little bit more of a turquoise. Okay, while I do that, the painting is still drying off right here, right now. And this is where you're going to start maybe blotting and dabbing some random areas of this turquoise. Look at that. It changes the entire texture and being of this painting. And I like to frame my paintings sometimes, so I usually start with the outside edges and bring some of that stuff in. So I dab on the outside and I start bringing some of that beautiful, beautiful stuff coming in. Look at that. Dang. I'm liking this. This is so fun and it's just so calming because I know in my mind I can mess up. I know I can make mistakes. Take a look. You can see that there are mistakes. There are imperfections. It's not a perfect painting. And that is allowed. That's what I always teach. That's allowed. Sometimes you get those art teachers like, no, you're doing it wrong. Well, art is art, you know. I would get C's and D's in high school in art, believe it or not. It's because I didn't do it the way they wanted, you know? So I, I teach that do it the way you want. Be who you want to be. You're the artist. Okay, as you saw when I was talking right there, I kind of cleaned off my brush. I wiped it off. I still got some greenish turquoise paint on there, but very little. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of that green that I made and I'm going to go ahead and just bring more yellow into that. I'm going to bring in a little bit more yellow meeting the green, not the turquoise, the green. If you need to make more green, you know how to do it. And this is going to be the fun little detail step right here. Same brush. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to maybe just blot or dab some of these little highlighted areas of this lime green. And wow, it's another layer, but it's a layer of highlights and it changes the dynamic of this painting. I'm just put a little bit on my brush and I'm letting the brush do the work. Okay. Blot it or dab it. Separate your blots or dabs. Leave some of that stuff not pure. You know, I didn't add too much yellow in the middle right up there on the top. Kept that kind of available. But look at that. That is so fun. It is just like you're adding these like cool textures on there. Okay. We're going to set that down take my napkin, wipe off my brush, and I'm going to make, what do I want to make? Let's do some dark. Let's add some blue, yellow. Let's make a dark turquoise. So I add a lot more blue into my green. That makes a turquoise. Let's add that. Let's try it. Now, another way to make grass or make some texture is maybe down here in the bottom, take little spikes and bring up your spikes. I'm doing the flat side of that brush. So check that out. I'm like literally just taking a little bit of paint and I'm barely touching the canvas and I'm making like little spikes. You can even come up a little bit and make some dashes as, cause if you, as you get closer, you start to see more detail. As you're closer to the items, you start to see a little bit more detail and you can add a different layer. And I'm just making little spikes just kind of happen right here. So it gives that the viewer or the person looking at this painting 
a little bit more like detail to look at. Okay, it's a, just a small touch, nothing too outrageous, nothing too difficult. Those clouds are already drying very, very fast. The white parts on the clouds, real bright white, might still be drying a little bit. But there you go. That is your basic 101. Oh, look at that. Almost lost my brush. I got it on my hand. Gives you an idea of what you can start with. All right. This is just one of the beginnings of many, many paintings that we can do together. But we started off with our regular blue, brought some white into it, which made that atmospheric look. We added clouds with just plain white, dabbing, blotting, changing the atmosphere, breaking up some of that blue. And then we worked on our land, our grass. We added highlights and lowlights. And in just a short amount of time, we made a painting come to life. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you for joining and making this all happen. Uh, hit subscribe, hit share, whatever you want to do. But a lot of the people that I've taught, um, I've actually painted with. And um, please send me your paintings. Please send me uh, comments, anything. And I appreciate you all for um, just trying. That's what it's all about, is just giving it a whirl, just seeing what you can do and maybe letting some of the stresses of the day take a hike. So either way, thanks guys. All right, we'll see you on the next episode.